Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our pre-match press conference to preview our FA Cup tie with Boreham Wood. And if we can start off with Vinny O'Connor from Sky Sports, please. Hi, Frank. Hope you're well. Hi, hi. Yes, well, thanks. Good, good. Uh, first of all, Frank, you obviously text Luke Garrard on the Monday after they beat Bournemouth in the last round. What did you have to say to him and how will you welcome him to Goodison Park? Um... <clears throat> Well, I sent him a message just to congratulate him because uh, I'd watched the game against Bournemouth. I thought it was a special evening and I'm actually close with Scott Parker as well. So sometimes the FA Cup just does that. I thought the uh, the feeling of the players and the fans and the owner and, and the manager himself, uh, I felt it was just right to sort of congratulate him and, and offer him a, an early warm welcome to, to Goodison. I've been in uh, this situation before, similar um, in my playing days. And I wanted to make sure that they know that they'll get a very any help that they can in terms of the match day and what they need, except for the 90 minutes of the game. So, um, yeah, that was it. The biggest challenge for you, though, when you're preparing for a game against non-league opposition and clearly your, your favourites to, to, to beat them, and, and quite convincingly and easily? Well, I think some of the beauty of where I'm at here now is I've been in such a short period of time that we are a working progress in, in many ways in terms of what we're trying to do on the pitch so it's just another um, opportunity for us to keep improving so we, we don't we don't even have to look and view it as anything but a game for us to be better than we were in our last game to consider the opposition for what they are in terms of their strengths and weaknesses and be the best that we can be you know as I say there's, there's no um, feeling of will we relax and have this incredible confidence that it'll all be fine we're not there we need to keep working and, and, and play as well as we can Obviously, Frank, there's been a, a number of off-field things to consider this week as well. We've seen that Vitaly Mikolenko criticise Russia's national team for keeping quiet over what's happening in Ukraine. Will Vitaly play tomorrow night? And is there any thought given to maybe some kind of gesture we've seen? Obviously, Ukrainian players handed the captaincy for their respective clubs, for instance. He will, he will play tomorrow. Um, and that was a decision I'd made, <clears throat> regardless of the outside um, situation um, purely on a football decision and of course you have to be very aware of of the life decision for him at the moment <coughs> and uh, he will play and we'll see about any kind of gesture but if there's a gesture it's the fact he's starting the game and um, yeah that's a decision Is football kind of helping him at the moment Frank? Um, <coughs> I don't want to answer those questions for him because um, it feels like the, the, the training and potential of playing is a relief for him. The, co the conversations I've had I'd rather keep private because they're, they are delicate. Um, but at the moment we're giving him all the support and I'm sure he feels that from, from our end. And um, he's also a new player here. So there's so many things that have happened to him, let alone moving over here as a young man, coming to a different country, different city and a different football club. He's now having to contend with all this, so he has all our support on that on that front. Also today, how does the club's suspension of commercial sponsorship arrangements with Alicia Usmanov impact on you? And how accurate are reports that Usmanov sat in on your interview to become the Everton manager? Yeah, well, those reports are inaccurate. Um, my, my interview was with the board, um, with Mr. Mashiri, the chairman, uh, Denise, the CEO, and others, but not Mr. Usmanov. So that that's not accurate in that sense. Um, and um, in terms of what it changes, in in terms of the short term, I think well, I think we can see from the outside of how we reacted as a club on Saturday against Manchester City, and the steps that we we make. And those are not my decisions; that's club decisions from above me. That we are doing the right thing as a club. And in the short term, I've been here. I've had no doubt that we were reacting the right way. In terms of how it, re uh, it did it affect my training session this morning? No. Did it affect how we prepare for Boreham Wood? No. Um, and that's just where it's at. After Saturday, do you know whether you're facing any action of your post-match comments? And should the apology you received from Mike Riley negate that anyway? And also, should Ashley Cole even have his yellow card rescinded in light of that apology? I don't know about Ashley's yellow card. I'm not sure he's going to pick up another nine or something and get suspended. So... Um, <laughs> I think emotion, emotion from Ashley is what um, I played. I played alongside that emotion, and that's what makes top elite um, sportsmen um, great. They're emotional, and so I won't. I won't hold that against Ashley. Um, I haven't been told about anything about reporting of my comments after. I think I was pretty straight. And when you're commenting on such a clear uh, incident, um, I don't think I've really heard anybody in the game that said anything. But it was an absolute penalty, and the apology as well showed that from. 
um, the the referee's side that it was um, a mistake for whatever reason. Um, th there's not much more to say now. There's not much more to say because he can't change anything and I don't want to be the manager keep um, <clears throat> banging on about it weeks after the event. The only thing I hope is now there's been a few for Everton before I got here um, that, have, that have happened that even with the benefit of VAR, the human element involved has gone against us. I hope that that can change. I'm not asking for anything. I'm just, when you have such a clear one against you, obviously it, it, it brings that up in your mind. And we hope going forward that those ones will not go against us when they deserve to. Have you been given any assurances going forward? And also, I suppose, so they learned from, from that incident. And you've been given an explanation as to how Chris Kavanagh came to the conclusion that what he was seeing was inconclusive with regard to giving a penalty. No, and that, 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 no, I haven't been given that. And um, in terms of it, it's just been explained to me. It was a, an absolute mistake, and I haven't been. It hasn't been broken down to me. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why a lot of us managers and probably fans and people in football would love to hear the conversations that happen between the on-pitch referee and VAR. And not every conversation, but one of these critical ones, and to, to see the method that got to the result, which was a non-penalty. Um, because that's quite hard to get your head around. But I haven't been offered anything, and you know what? I, I, I don't want to hold um, uh, all referees or Mike Riley to account on it, that there can be mistakes that happen. This one was very clear, and, and I struggled to understand how and why it happened. Um, but I can't ask for any more than what I've got. We don't get the point back, um, which is critical for us, with the position we're in. Um, so on that front, I, we move on. And as I say, I hope that going forward, we don't have to suffer too many more of these um, decisions, particularly that clear, um, that go against us. And finally, for me, Frank, obviously Kevin Thowell started as director of football. How will it work between the two of you? What conversations have you had so far? Well, we just had lunch before I'm on here, and um, we, we've spoken over the last few days. Um, I, I don't know Kevin fantastically well, but everyone I know who knows him in football have had real high hold him in real high regard. I found that in the early conversations. I know that we'll work very closely, I'm very open, and I just want to be better personally, as a club, as a team, any kind of way we can be better, and having a, uh, a like-minded person, I think in Kevin and, and his expertise and his role, alongside mine, can hopefully improve us, and that's the aim. I should also check, Frank, actually, I know Donny's cup tied, but uh, was it cramp in the end, or is it a, a more serious problem than Donny, that? Donny's fine, he's, he's been training this week. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. All Thanks. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to Alistair McGowan at the BBC, please. Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, I just wondered, obviously, you mentioned there about the sort of ties with um, the, the Everton have cut this week. I just wondered, as a manager, when you come into a, a position, do you consider what the commercial ties of the club is or even the ownership when you look to take on a position? Um, well, I think that would depend. It's a difficult question in a, in a sense that I got asked this question in my last press conference about club ownership and um, I don't think managers or coaches can be held accountable for that. I think that's obviously a Premier League. I mean, the, the last one that I know, and this is as much knowledge as I have, was a, a Newcastle takeover that seemed to take months for the Premier League and people involved who, who are in the know to come to the conclusion of you know, whatever they come to. So I think as a coach, if you start considering every possible angle, that's quite difficult. I think your remit is what you know to look at, um, or the idea is to look at the club, to look at what you can do for the club, and to be the best employee you can be if and when you get the gig. Um, so that's absolutely how I looked here. I didn't go any deeper than that. And do you think the club has made the right decision here? I think I, as in the short time that I've been at the club and working personally with the people who really matter at the club, and I say I interviewed with the board and I've got a close relationship with the board. I had absolute faith that they would make they were making the right decisions as they see them in the right way. The way we behaved last Saturday against Manchester City, I thought we were one of the forerunners of of, of behaving well um, and showing solidarity and, and uh, unity and in the right way. And and I think today again is a, in a, in a, is a show of of us as a club doing the right thing. And it's a suspension, as, as the statement said today. And I think it was the right thing to do. And um, at that point, for me, it's very important that I concentrate on football and the things that are un unpaid to do by effect, which is to try and obviously win the game in front of us tomorrow. Yeah, and just last of all, um, apologies for asking a, another non-related football question necessarily. Just obviously there's been a lot of speculation about Roman Abramovich this 
week in terms of him leaving Chelsea or maybe putting the club up for sale. I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. I don't because I have no knowledge of it. I only read what, what you, you read. I'm not at Chelsea anymore. I had an amazing time at Chelsea. If I say it as, that you take as you find, I can only be very thankful that I was in a period of the club which Roman Abramovich came into and changed the face of it. And on a football level, we were very successful. And as I say, take as you find, I had absolute support in my time as a player and as a manager for what anyone wants to think from the outside. I've got no comment on them now. I'm Everton manager and I, I don't have enough knowledge to, to give anything more than that. Thanks, Alistair. Okay, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. We'll move on to James Savundra, please, at TalkSport. Hi, Frank. How much of an important start do you think it was from the club to basically say that they're going to cut ties, suspend them immediately with, with these Russian companies? Well, if it feels right for the club, then it's the right thing to do. And at the moment, we're seeing it done um, very regularly across the world, people making decisions. Um, so that's a club decision and um, as, a, as a coach, as a person and my staff and the players who work here on the ground, our life hasn't changed very much in a way. So it's very hard for us to, to go any further than that. We, we do our jobs, we feel a deep in, a sense of empathy and emotion to things that are happening in the world. That's our, that's our I think, a human instinct. And then the club has, has made decisions that they think is the right decision. And finally, for me, Frank, I wanted to ask you about what you've made of Boreham Wood this season and the videos you'd have seen of their games and their cup run that's taken this far so far. We're very impressive. We treat them with the utmost respect, which is why we prepare as we would prepare for any game. They're, they're riding high in the league. They have a very um, a certain style which shows um, that they're well coached and well managed. Um, I watched the game against Bournemouth actually twice when it happened and since then and you can see the, the way that they want to play and, and for any, any, any uh, team or club in the, in the league they're in to reach this far is an absolute achievement. Um, so that's why we welcome them well but we'll be prepared as we can and, uh, and try and win the game by being uh, our best. Thanks Frank. Thank you. Thanks James. We'll go to Carl Woodward at Radio Merseyside please. Hi Frank. Hi. Um, you spoke about Luke Garrard earlier on. Um, he's been managing the club since he was 30. And, you know, Derby gave you a chance in your 30s and Wayne Rooney, for example. Um, is it good that clubs are taking on younger managers, you know, give, putting faith in them? Yeah, I, I think it's great. And I think there's a lot to be said for youth. Of course, you have to have the talents and you have to have a real drive and ambition. But sometimes I think that comes with youth, to have drive and ambition and to come with a fresh set of eyes. Um, and um, I think that's that's great and a lot of clubs are doing it and being forward thinking. I know personally that sometimes being young gives you, um, you don't become, um, you, you, you're not tainted by failures or thoughts of the past, you only think forward. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy myself to work in that way and to see other managers like Luke, like other lots of young managers, young British managers, because I think sometimes in our, in our uh, leagues here it's been People think it's easy for British managers, but it's not because they're judged sometimes at a slightly different level. Um, are getting opportunities and doing well. I know you can't take anything for granted, but if you get through this tie, you're only one game away from Wembley, so that must be a really good incentive, must it, for the players? Of course, of course. You know, I was um, speaking to Richie Richardson earlier and um, chatting football and things, and he was saying it's just, it's just how desperate he is to play at Wembley. And that's because of the history of Wembley. And I'm fortunate as a player, I got to play there a lot. And it's a magical place. But we are two rounds, two games away from doing that. So we treat Boreham Wood with respect. There's some tough teams, whoever you're going to play in, in the, the draw for the next round. But that carrot is the one that we all have to, to aim towards. And we saw Kidderminster was so close to knocking West Ham out the last round. So you really do have to be on your guard, don't you? Well, absolutely, absolutely. Because this is football and we saw... Well, Boreham, we did at Bournemouth, and if we are not, um, uh, if we don't get the details right, if we don't prepare right, if we don't have approached the game in the right attitude, then that is always possible. So we're, we're, we're certainly not taking it lightly going into it. And Nathan Patterson, um, we've mentioned about him in the last few weeks somewhere, have you? But um, how uh, pleased have you been with his patience? Because he hasn't played yet, has he? He hasn't started the game, but is he, you know, he's been shown great patience. I don't know. I don't know. He is on the outside. He's showing great patience um, because he hasn't come knocking on my door. Um, I think a few things with Nathan. He's come here at a young age to the Premier League 
Um, it's a big ask and he's, he's a developing player of sorts and he comes in a position where our captain is there and Seamus has been playing very well. Of course he'll get his games, that's what we brought him here for and he's certainly a player for the now and the future. So he will, he will need to be patient at times and he will need to keep working at times and develop and that's very, very normal to come to a club in the Premier League like ourselves for a young player to get in is not easy but we got him here for a reason. He's been great. He's been, you know, getting on with his job and training, and he needs to keep taking steps every day, learning in training, giving everything in training, and when he gets his opportunities, come and show what he can do.